might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. The Film Lounge presents... Spoiler Free Major Pig! First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. Come on! With Chris Gooch. I'm the dude. I'm going to tell you a story about a boy who would never grow up. About the pirate who wished to catch him. About the island where fairies roamed. So, it's Peter Pan Begins with the origin story that was never really necessary, but follows in the footsteps of Melissa as we learn, well, very little about any of the characters in the Peter Pan mythology in the new Hugh Jackman film, Pan. Welcome! Set in England during World War II, we find Hugh Jackman's Captain Blackbeard pulling a Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie as he pays nuns to allow his men to snatch orphan children, where he takes them to Neverland in order to work in his mines. Okay, just for legal reasons and to be fair, it's never been proven that Brangelina have their children work in mines, but it certainly would explain why they have so many. During one of these raids, the pirates steal young orphan Peter only to discover that he will one day fulfill the prophecy to defeat Captain Blackbeard. Have you come to come me, Peter? I don't believe in bedtime stories. Now the film is directed by Joe Wright, who gave us Atonement and the spy thriller Hannah. And the guy really lets loose with the visuals and the choreography, with some amazing set pieces, fight sequences and splashes of colour that just make it feel like a commercial for a high definition TV. On top of this, you just have Hugh Jackman chewing through scenery and he's clearly having a ball in the role of Blackbeard, as he just gets the masses singing along to Nirvana and the Ramones, although it does kind of look like, what if Hugh Jackman was a meth addict? Sweet, gentle children. You who weep molten pearls of innocent tears, dry them, dear Nippers, for I have sprung you from life's cruel dungeon, and hereby grant you liberty. Jackman's band of pirates look amazing, but it also looks like a bunch of drag queens who have just finished the world's biggest bender. But that all just adds to the visual splendor of the film. Honestly, you can't fault a single cast member. Everyone gets into their roles, gives it their all, and it just looks like they're having a great time doing it as well. Even the normally wooden Garrett Hedlund is a really interesting and comical James Hook, and relative newcomer Levi Miller makes for an excellent pan. If I'm gonna trust you, I need to know your name. It's Hook. The name's James Hook. Happy? No! Admittedly, I've never been a big advocator of 3D, but if you're planning on seeing this film, then 3D is the only way to go. There is much more depth to the scenery and so many layers all interlocking into one another that the 3D just enhances the experience. I often find that 3D effects really wear off after about 20 minutes, but this really sticks with you until the end of the film. The film is ultimately aimed at a child audience, so it's easy to assume that the character of Peter Pan is unadaptable and outdated. I mean, looking from an adult's perspective, you would be right. But kids are sure to love the thrills, the music, and the colors that this film offers. The princess, I presume. Oh, well, I'm actually just a minor, but I appreciate the compliment. Although the film is not without its faults, some of the scenes border on pantomime, and this isn't helped by the continual foreshadowing that goes on throughout the film. From Hedlund carrying a hook for no good reason, to lots of suggestions that he might lose his hand, to really cringeworthy lines like, you and me, Hook, are going to be friends forever. Even though there are some great visuals, there are some really questionable CGI. There are flying slash falling scenes where the body just doesn't look right, you know, and arms bend in places where they're not supposed to, and then there's some just jaw-droppingly bad CGI colorful skeleton birds. I mean, my jaw literally dropped when I saw them, because I thought to myself, you can't seriously be putting something so shite into such a big budget movie. The film features the noble savages, but instead of the racist Indians like the Disney version, you have every other ethnicity, from Aboriginals to Chinese acrobats, to Pakistani Indians to Malaysians, to the American girl with the dragon tattoo. So, that's less racist, I guess? 
One of the other big issues, and this is just common for prequel type movies, is that often the things that made you love the original story so much are held off until the very end and sometimes they're not even shown at all because of the whole we're definitely going to make a sequel approach to these franchising films nowadays. Also, much like Maleficent, there's a strong desire to make a famously reviled villain be viewed as a misunderstood tragic figure. Which is fine, but look, let's face it, it's going to get predictable and boring after a while. But when all is said and done, it's important to remember that the film is aimed squarely at kids, so the target market will clearly be satisfied come the end. Adults, on the other hand, just might not feel like their needs are being met. Pan gets 3 out of 5 stars. Or 3 out of 5 surly drag queen pirates. Come on, kid. Make them believe. Mermaid Lagoon. I think you're gonna rock him. You can say that again.